my daughter came in and woke us up and we jumped out of bed and she said there was a fire. And then we could hear people breaking in the doors and pounding on doors. They were saying, you know, the apartment's on fire and somebody call 911 and stuff like that. This is not a drill. But by the time I got out into the living room, I saw that I could feel heat on the floor and the place was filled with smoke. When we got to the stairs, we, I've always heard that you couldn't uh, breathe, you know, that you could die from smoke inhalation. But I always thought, why can't you just hold your breath or something like that? And you really can't. As we just barely got out, we finally all got together. We were just standing there watching um, the place burn. The stairs went up in flames. And then I watched my daughter's bedroom burn, and I watched the living room burn, and then I saw our uh, bedroom, you know, just turn orange. I didn't know what we were going to do. I wasn't sure where we were going to go, and we only had our pajamas. We didn't have shoes, we didn't have socks, we didn't have coats. It was cold, and I'd never been through anything like that before. And so we just headed off to the office, and the Red Cross was there. Things had started smoothing out a lot since the Red Cross had helped out, given us you know, money for clothes and a place to stay for a little while, while we had nowhere else to go. They found us a hotel and they put a lot of extra effort in to make sure that we could have a hotel where we could keep our dogs. If we hadn't had that help that we had from the Red Cross, uh, I don't know how we would have uh, made it. This is my chance to assist other people in getting the same help that we had. I want everybody to be able to have this. I really was aware of the fact that I was probably dying, you know. And I remember at one point him praying that, um, God, please don't let my dad die. My dad was walking in the area that we were getting brush from, and then I just saw him completely fall over and lose consciousness. And once they stung me on, on each arm, right, exactly the same spot on each arm, and I was standing there just kind of, you know, taking a break, and I started feeling a little bit lightheaded, and the next thing I remember was that I was flat on my back, uh, looking up at the sky. And Michael. It came over. I came back and my dad was was trying to call 911, but um, I ran over and he had passed out. He kept saying, "Dad, Dad, are you okay? What's going on? What you you know? What's?" And he started. He, he shook me to see if I was still breathing. He kind of I, I could feel his hands on me. So I'm like, "Dad, Dad, are you okay? Are you okay?" So I dialed 911. Well, I had gone into anaphylactic shock. I ran to the road tried and flagged the ambulances down. And then after they were there, I called my mom. You know, it was, it was so hard to get the phone call that day. I was um, out shopping, um, completely surprised when the Florence dispatch called me and said, you know, do you know that um, your son has dispatched the police to your home? Remember the, the EMTs got there, you know, it's just, it's just, everything's a little spotty, you know. I can remember the, hearing the sirens and I can remember somebody being over me and asking me questions. I'm so grateful our family is still intact. I mean, that is, you know, the blessing for us. All that preparation, the training from, from the Red Cross was really leading up to that moment. I mean, that was the whole purpose of that was for that time. The training helped me to go, okay, next I need to check for breathing and then check, make sure the scene is safe before I act and that all that I would need to help someone in an emergency. The ENT said, you know, your husband's vital signs are returning to normal and I think he's going to be okay. And he said, your son did a great job. Uh, I asked the doctor, I said, you know, I said, I got stung twice. I said, I've never been allergic to bees before. And I said, so, you know, how close was I to, to, to dying? And he said, had your son not been there to call 911, he said, you'd be dead right now. And so that's why I was so thankful for, uh, for his willingness to get Red Cross trained. I would have hated for him to go through that having not had that training in his pocket. You know, he just had those extra tools to draw from. 
Michael is somebody that anybody, any age could look up to. I felt like I had prepared him by taking him and putting him in that training class. You know, he acted under pressure. He used the skills that he had learned. He was prepared. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the training.